Atelis. Atelis is a uh, software development and energy consultancy company based in Paris in France. And um, I joined Atelis last year and I work primarily on the Matisse model that I'm going to, to present today. Um, so, is it working? Here we go. So yeah, what, what is METIS? Uh, well, METIS stands for Markets and Energy Technologies Integrated. Uh, are there something missing actually? Uh, system, uh, software, sorry. Um, so that's the name that uh, the commission came up with. It's not, uh, we n didn't make it up our, ourselves. And actually it was in 2014 that the commission published a call for tender where it asked, um, where, where it required a, a software to be developed that should be delivered to the commission. So the objective was, that um, that we should uh, or that it software should be developed that should complement existing tools such as the one we've already seen before, and it should provide stronger analytical capabilities to the European Commission staff. Oops, sorry, uh, it looks somewhat strange now, but okay, we're gonna make it. Um, so um, so the uh, the idea behind METIS is actually that uh, well the commission relies on a lot of models we have primes we have other models um, and with all those models studies are prepared and then provided to the commission with METIS it's a bit different in the sense that the tool as such is going to be delivered to the commission so the idea is that the commission staff can actually modify specific key parameters they can play around with the tool they can go dig into the the input data they can change specific inputs, they can then look, okay, what are the changes and impacts uh, on, on the results. So by providing the tool as such, well, the, the aim is to increase transparency. And the second point is that the Commission wanted to have a software tool which can serve as a platform for the coordination and for the cooperation with member states and with stakeholders. Um, so the, we, we are happy that we won this, this call for tenders in 2014 and since 2015 we are now like preparing and, and uh, developing this software and uh, there's a dedicated website on fr from on the DGNR website uh, on METIS where you can find quite a bunch of information. Um, who is behind METIS? Well, um, first of all it's Atelis as consortium leader. Uh, we take care of the entire software development, we take care of the model config configurations so of the different distinct modules that, that are included and also we prepare studies because the the project as such it does not only include the software but also that we run some studies or prepare some studies on specific topics then we have in, in the consortium IAEW from Aachen University that bring in their expertise on power system modeling in particular on, on grids uh, distribution grids we have CONGAS for all the gas network modeling and we have frontier economics for the uh, market design aspects. Now, uh, you might wonder what, what METIS looks like, uh, what, what is it now in the end, uh, what has it become? Well, generally speaking, it's, it's just another EU energy system and market model. We cover all the EU uh, 28 uh, countries plus some neighboring countries like Norway, Switzerland and, and the Balkan countries. The particularity is that we focus usually on a single year. So in contrast to primes, for instance, we take out one year, let's say 2030, and also we take input data from primes. So we take the capacity mix from, let's say, the UK30 scenario 2030. We take the demand from primes. And then what we do is that we perform in, in dispatch optimization for, for the single year. But we do it now on an hourly basis for the entire year, for the 8,760 hours. And, uh, and this allows actually to see the, the dynamics behind. Um, apart from the, from the dispatch optimization, we can also run a capacity optimization, but this is so far not the major focus of, of METIS uh, up to now. Um, in the afternoon, we're gonna have a focus group on uh, capacity expansion in high res words. There I can, well, I will speak more bit about the capacity expansion, but so far for METIS, it's all about um, dispatch optimization. <laughs> Um, we cover the power sector, uh, that means all kind of generation, storage, assets, uh, cross-border NTC capacities between the countries. So each country is usually modeled as a single node, but for some of the bigger countries, you also represent the main transmission lines within the country. We have a stylized representation of, of distribution networks. And in addition to the power sector, we also cover the gas sector. So once again, it's a, a country view, so we have the LNG terminals in the different countries, we have the gas fields, the interconnections between the countries, 
And uh, the major strength of this approach is that we can also combine the power in the gas sector and do some joint, joint analysis. Somewhat similar to what you've seen yesterday in the presentation from Laurent von Climact uh, on, the, on the power and gas uh, supply issues and, and disruption issues. Um, and we're currently developing a third module, which is on the heat sector. Um, so we try to have a stylized representation of district heating and cooling networks. And this shall, in a way, complement the whole picture so that we can see what are the synergies between power, gas and heat. <coughs> Now, as I mentioned, it looks a bit like just another power system model or energy system model, but the, the major difference is that, uh, as mentioned earlier, the tool is being handed to the, over to the Commission. So uh, we have to take away some specific user needs in this sense. Um, and those needs, well, we distinguish them according to, let's say, two types of users. On the one hand, we have the let's say the standard policymaker analyst who faces uh, very concise policy questions in his daily working life. Uh, he wants to assess like a specific, specific question, like on security of supply, so what might be the impact of a gas supply uh, disruption or what are the benefits of increasing the interconnector between Spain and France. <coughs> or he might also wonder, okay, if I increase flexibility on the demand side, how is this uh, enhancing your renewables integration? And in order to answer those questions, well, the, the policymaker needs a kind of user interface, interface that allows him to change this very specific key data in this, in this overall, let's say, prime scenario that is integrated in METIS. And then he should be able to run a simulation and check, okay, how is the, the change, the incremental change in, in key assumptions, how is this impacting the overall results in terms of emissions, in terms of costs, in terms of curtailment or whatever. So um, there, he should also be able to have a quite a detailed uh, assessment of, of results. And then we have another kind of, kind of user, which are the developers, or let's say people who are more familiar with energy system modeling. And for them, the, the, um, the questions are slightly different because they are more interested in how can I adapt Matisse to my personal needs? So how can I maybe change the characteristic of specific assets of a specific power plant? How can I maybe build up a completely new scenario? Or how can I change, let's say, market behavior? And uh, in order to allow such, uh, such assessments, well, we need to, first of all, we need to ensure that the people, the developers, that they fully understand how the, the model as such is working so far so that they can really tackle the, the, the uh, specific issues and change or modify those parts that, they, that they're aiming at. So they also need some kind of application programming interface that allows them to easily interfere with the model. And once they have done the, the, the adjustment of the tool, well, they should be able to, to release this updated tool to the policymaker. So the, the needs are slightly different from those of the policymakers. Now, how, how did we try to reply to those user needs? Well, the, the core of Matisse, I would say, is the the open open book and open data approach. So in the end, we, like we have actually three major components in METIS. We have um, one one part which is actually not open accessible, which is the Artelius Crystal Supergrid. This is our own ready-made uh, optimization and visualization tool, which we sell like very often to to any kind of clients. But now Artelius Crystal Supergrid is linked on the one hand to an open what we call an open book model. And this open book model, well, it is describing the mathematical model behind the energy system model. So it includes all a description of all major inputs and outputs of the key constraints, the objective function, and the how we describe the behavior of single assets. And this part, well, this open book, because it's going to be published by the European Commission. Um, and then secondly, we have an open database. So um, there you find in all kind of primes data that we're using, but you also find additional data, let's say hourly time series that are not delivered by primes, but that we gather from other sources or that we generate ourselves. And those, those two parts, well, they, they are going to be published gradually by the European Commission. And in the end, uh, well, this having the data available and accessible and also the being able to look into the, the actual model description, well, people can, first of all, understand what is happening inside the tool. But secondly, they could also be able to reproduce the results that are made with METIS. Either they get a license for a Telescope Crystal Supergrid, which we warmly welcome, or they just rebuild the same tool in another, in another kind of optimization environment, and they should find more or less the same results. Um, 
very quickly, because there's not much time left for the analysts, we have quite a comprehensive graphical user interface. You see a European map for each country. You can look what are the different assets that are simulized. When you click on one of the icons, you can see, okay, what are the key parameters behind? You can directly modify this parameter. So you can, for instance, change the interconnection between France and Spain. Then you can run the simulation and you have a whole set of key performance indicators to determine what are the impacts on the results. Those results are annual, but also hourly. So you can find a result like the one on the bottom where we've, where we've shown the cumulative generation distinguished by the different types of technologies. And for the developers, well, uh, as I mentioned, they are more interested in changing the, the, the behavior of the tool as such and to adjust it. There we have uh, some kinds of uh, possibilities via Python that they have predefined Python scripts. They modify according to their needs and they run those scripts and then they can change the behavior of the platform. Um, very quickly on what was done so far with Metis. We did um, a few studies on power markets and they were also included in the impact assessment on the market design initiative. We did some studies on power and gas infrastructure. Um, actually, we tried to replicate the standard cost-benefit methodology of NSOE and NSOG. Um, those studies are already available online on the website, um, where you can also find already some, some literature on the methodology in, in the technical notes. And we are currently working on electric vehicles, on power-to-heat issues, on bidding behavior. So there are some, some more studies coming in the next ones and until next year. Quick uh, summary in a nice format. Uh, so we, uh, I think I try to make clear that Metis is a relative transparent, flexible tool. And I think the major point here is that uh, by handing over the tool now to the commission staff and later on it is planned that the tool will also be published and be available to member states and potentially to stakeholders. Well, we, we allow the, the, the commission staff and the people to use the tool and thus uh, get more a feeling of the interdependencies and actually not looking at the pure numbers at the pure results of the tool, but more playing around with the tool, a bit like what we had yesterday with the global calculator, but just in a, let's say, different manner and, uh, and to get a feel on, okay, if I change here, how is this impacting the rest and which are maybe the, the most important levers and which are maybe less important. Um, so this is maybe the major benefit of, of Matisse. Uh, the project runs until 2018, so until next year. Uh, as mentioned, the, the data and the open book model shall be published within the next months and uh, next year. And uh, so far, we have already a group of early users among the member states that are going to use METIS. And afterwards, it should also become available to stakeholders. Uh, I guess I'm going to stop here. Thank you for your attention. more dig into the results they have so far from basically from primes and better understand what is behind those results or given given the framework from primes uh, when they change now specific issues like a PCI what is it changing so far it is not planned to have a kind of feedback and I think it's not that easy either so uh, we can discuss it with the commission maybe but uh, so far this is not planned yeah. I'm Robbie Morrison uh, what do you have? A, have you just decided uh, which license you'll be publishing under? Because if it's proprietary copyright, it's not much use to yeah. the open modeling community, for example. Well, this question is actually not to be answered by us, because Metis, as, as a tool, is owned by the European Commission, so it's so they are, I guess, in discussion and and figuring out under which license they're going to publish it. But uh, you should rather address the people from the Commission. There are some I see in the room <laughs> that you can maybe hand over this question. Hi, Steve Pye from UCL UCC. Um, quick question, just in terms of the stakeholders, uh, do you see this 
uh, being used in the sort of wider research community? And do you see there being a potential cost to the licensing of the tool? Well, once again, the, so the, the final decision when the tool becomes available to, to all the stakeholders is up to the European Commission. Um, let's say once, once the tool becomes available, uh, if you want to use then the super grid uh, optimization and visualization platform, this is usually freely available to academics. So uh, given this is, this is our standard product that we, that we sell as, as Artelius, uh, well, we already today, we, we provide licenses for academics for free. So I mean, it depends a bit on the, on the special conditions, but usually that's the case. But it's rather about the question, when is the open book and the open data actually happening? And this is rather something that the, sorry, that the commission has to, has to decide on.